afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, let me welcome you at uh, our special webinar, one of uh, in our series, uh, which is focusing on SMEs. But uh, today's seminar is a very special one because of topic. Uh, if we focus on future, we have to focus on uh, our digital world. And during pandemic, we uh, recognized all of us how digital infrastructure is important. Uh, we have to complete digital single market. If we uh, talk about completion of digital single market, we talk primarily about infrastructure, then about education, and then about legal framework. But infrastructure should be on our focus and should be the priority also if we talk about uh, future European recovery. I'm very happy that uh, this will be or also a substantial part of a recovery package, which is financed by uh, European institutions. But I'm particularly happy that today we will talk about all aspects of uh, connectivity, particularly about 5G networks, because it will allow us uh, new opportunities, not only Internet of Things, but also new technologies and new approaches like uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, 5G will come uh, also with new potential opportunities for energy savings. Uh, and uh, it is very important also as we recognize the huge amount of data. On the yearly basis, uh, we recognize 40% increase in uh, data consumption. And all of us, we know that we need a major step forward like um, 5G is. At the same time, talking about uh, op or new opportunities, we have to talk also about concerns, which is among our citizens connected, particularly with uh, some health aspect, uh, aspects of uh, uh, job loss and also aspects of uh, safety. I'm pretty sure that we will address all, not only new opportunities, but also how to deal with these challenges uh, during today's discussion. We have exceptionally uh, good panelists, and uh, let me finish by giving um, the word to my very good friend, Michal Boni, who will be moderating today's discussion. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Ivan, for uh, uh, those uh, opening words. Uh, you indicated uh, how important uh, the implementation of 5G solutions uh, uh, is for Europe, for future economy, for the society. I fully agree. And uh, we are at the beginning of the new financial perspective. Uh, uh, and uh, I hope that we find some uh, solutions to, to start with MFF and recovery plan from the beginning of uh, the next year. But uh, this is also uh, important to understand that uh, uh, 5G, uh, especially during the time of digital acceleration due to COVID-19, uh, is much more important than it was uh, uh, visible earlier. Uh, also, that we need to consider how 5G could be crucial uh, for SMEs, if it will be accessible, uh, if it will give secure connections for SMEs and you have mentioned the Internet of Things. Uh, I think that SMEs will be very engaged and involved in new solutions uh, related to uh, Internet of Things. Uh, and at the end, you have also mentioned some risks, risks and threats. So we need to discuss about future of 5G, uh, connectivity, but secure connectivity, uh, but uh, connectivity which will be accessible for all people and companies, especially small, medium uh, enterprises. And we need uh, to uh, find some solutions uh, uh, to uh, manage some risks. Uh, we are discussing about network information security uh, after review, new version and a new proposal, which will be presented and done by the European Commission in the middle of December. But what is, what is crucial, we need to assess today how we are prepared to implementation of 5G. And we need to know that uh, this is not the topic which could be postponed. So we need to find all solutions in the area of security, in the area of uh, uh, 
uh, harmonization of some member states' uh, behaviors, uh, uh, and also uh, uh, start with the practical pilots as it is in many, many countries. So we have uh, significant stakeholder, state, stakeholders during this uh, uh, panel, during this webinar, and we have great persons as representatives of those stakeholders. So we will have representatives of uh, European Commission uh, uh, and uh, very important institutions uh, as uh, ETNO, as uh, GSMA, uh, and also some representatives of business side and uh, our uh, uh, conclusions uh, will be done and prepared by Pilar de Castillo, a member of the European Parliament. Uh, 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 if I can say, uh, Pilar, uh, the, the mother of a new model of communication in the European Union. So let's start with the keynote uh, uh, um, speech done by Peter Stackman head of unit uh, future connectivity systems, the directorate general for communication networks, content and technology from the European Commission. Uh, Peter, resource, please. Thanks a lot, Mr. Boni. Thanks a lot, all colleagues. Good afternoon. It's really an honor for me to, to be with you and to give some opening words to this interesting discussion. So indeed, connectivity and security for SMEs. This is indeed very timely and it sums up nicely what we have in mind exactly for the, um, for the um, Recovery and Resilience Fund uh, in terms of 5G. Um, yeah, so we have seen that connectivity in general was um, key um, for the, uh, during the pandemic to keep society and economy uh, up and running. Um, 5G in the next step is identified as the enabler for the digital and green recovery and both of these pillars we of course know are very important as part of our proposal for a um, forward-looking investment as, as part of the recovery. Um, so the idea here is to provide the advanced connectivity for society and economy post-COVID and also be the basis for the digital transformation. So digitizing sectors like transport, like energy, like health, like agriculture, uh, to name a few. So it's not about, so it's first about digitizing them to make the new innovative services possible. And at the same time, also greening them. So for example, think about um, energy um, savings and, and um, greenhouse uh, emission savings through automated driving, through more efficient transport, or the same you can do uh, in the area of energy distribution. So here we have estimated in recent studies that you can green these sectors by 20% uh, in terms of just energy efficiency. Um, and then imagine, of course, now uh, in the context of the pandemic, we have, what we have seen, what else, and that's, I think, what Michael Boni just said, this accelerator is, of course, very interesting that you see we can save much more if we now see um, how more efficient we can be by simply not driving to work or um, not doing so many business trips. But uh, so this adds on that. So the, this 20% are of course much more sophisticated um, calculations, how exactly the energy savings can be done in the services of the future with 5G. Um, then of course we have to remind ourselves what we need to do now um, uh, in, the in, the, in the recovery is uh, look into infrastructure projects because this really uh, creates immediate economic activity, immediate growth, immediate jobs. So uh, this is of course key to, to think about in the recovery plans about these infrastructure projects. And on top of that, of course, then building the ecosystems and the new services. Um, in that context, uh, when we think about SMEs, which is of course another dimension, a very, very important dimension of the recovery, because at the end of the day, this value will be created by the SMEs, the innovation will be done by SMEs. So we, we think, or we can think uh, about this in three dimensions when we think about SMEs. First, they can be involved in the, um, in the rollout. So of course, part of the rollout, part of the infrastructure projects, SMEs will be part of it. 
Um, we think also about new supply models, uh, like we think about um, things like Open Run or uh, software networks, where um, new players can come in, both on the supply side, but also on the service provisioning. That's the first evident part, of course. So these projects should be very beneficial for, for SMEs. Then the second one is the services. So on top of these infrastructures, the service ecosystems need to be developed. Um, so the, there are a number of new ecosystems where both the telecom and the vertical industries are involved. And there the SMEs um, as part of both of these sectors, but also as intermediaries and as facilitators can, can play a role in the value chain. Uh, here we can also think about not only the investment in infrastructure, these funds that we think about, uh, infrastructure funds, but also venture capital funds, where we can help SMEs and startups to uh, think completely new services and, and go to the market quickly with that. So this was the second dimension, so the service side. And then, of course, the SMEs as a user. And this we see very much in your uh, um, background paper for this event today, which indeed goes very mainstream and says, OK, what is the future after the pandemic? What do SMEs in general need in terms of infrastructure? So not necessarily meaning only the, the high-end 5G new stuff, but also simply uh, how we will do business in the future. And there, of course, we need having infrastructures, we need service solutions available for SMEs to run the business efficiently, green, with new business opportunities. So this user dimension, uh, of course, enabling the use of these uh, digital services for SMEs will be, uh, will be important. Um, good. So that's then maybe a few words also on the security side, because as it also has been emphasized very much, of course, of course, everyone, including SMEs, will need secure, secure infrastructures. But especially if we think about what we want to do with 5G in the future, namely secure critical services that where the economy and society will depend on, and sometimes with life and death, if we think about uh, automated driving or safety services. So 4G, 5G is, and that's the good news, uh, is more secure than 4G because it has been developed, of course, with these critical services in mind when it was developed as a standard. Sometimes it comes across in these debates that 5G is something that is unsecure. That is, of course, not the case. It's, it's much more secure than 4G. But the difference is, of course, as I said, what we do with it and the features that we need to support. And these will then be the real-time features. They will be uh, cloud-based, software-based. Yeah? And this give, indeed, new attack surface. That's clear in terms of applications, but also in terms of the features that we need to, to enable these services. So we took this issue very serious um, after, also after the calls from the parliament and the council last year, we started this process about the 5G recommendation, um, which is not something that we, is like arbitrary political decision, it's, it's risk-based. Uh, that's maybe something well, also the, the whole world, I think, is looking again to Europe and say, okay, we do this very systematically and very uh, objectively with the, with the risk-based approach. So we have this common risk assessment and the toolbox of measures that came out then in the course of last year and the toolbox beginning of this year. So here we see the, this comprehensive set of risks and measures. So it's not arbitrary decision. It's not to discriminate companies or countries. Um, but we answer the question of high risk vendors in a risk based way by identifying the critical parts of the network and also setting criteria to identify high risk vendors. Then uh, up to the member states to proceed with restrictions and exclusions as appropriate based on this criteria. Um, that's one of the, the important, of course, the, this uh, toolbox is a very comprehensive um, catalog of, uh, of, uh, of uh, measures, but of course, this one is something that is very much looked into. The other one that is, of course, very important is the, the supply chain in the mid to long term, and we call it the diverse and sustainable supply chain. And here we have to develop uh, technology and both the, on the technology side, but also on the deployment side, we have to develop the capacities in Europe 
in a way that it's secure and Europe is well positioned and sovereign, if you want. Um, luckily, we are still well positioned with uh, <coughs> having two out of the three biggest uh, suppliers. Uh, Europe is home for those, and namely Nokia and Ericsson. So we have uh, we have still this strong position. Now the challenge is, of course, to look at the broader supply chain, things where Europe maybe is not so uh, advanced, for example, cloud-based service provisioning, uh, looking into um, semiconductor technologies, new chips, uh, new processors. So there, of course, when we move beyond smartphones in the future, there might be good opportunities. So here we have to look into the funding programs and say, let's design these funding programs in line with this toolbox, that these infrastructures are secure and that the new technologies are indeed developed. Of course, when we come to 6G, for example, standardization also in the global context, that, that's clear. Uh, for this, we have uh, now prepared this uh, new uh, joint undertaking, uh, which will be adopted end of this year, hopefully, smart networks and services towards 6G, which has two pillars exactly on these two points, developing the technology capacities of the future for Europe for the, uh, towards 6G, and uh, also making sure that we have deployment um, in Europe and look, think about the recovery fund. Public funding is becoming more and more important. And we need to make sure that this agenda, this deployment agenda is uh, consistent and we come to the infrastructure that are secure and, and um, good quality in the next few years. Um, okay, that's for the supply chain. And I said also the di diversity of the supply chain. And here we also have to look into what are the supply market trends and then open run is something that is discussed a lot recently also. Um, and here we close the circle also with the opportunities for European SMEs, because if we think about an evolution of the supply market, uh, we have the strong players that will play a role in the future that are European, but then think about also the new players that come into the game with these more open models. And there, of course, uh, let's think about European SMEs and how we can also support those. Um, good. So to conclude, we now have the um, once in a lifetime opportunity to develop these, um, these uh, plans, these investment plans in the recovery and resilience facility. So I'm looking forward to work with the member states for these plans, but also with the European Parliament, with all stakeholders uh, to develop these plans in a consistent way in Europe. So looking forward to the discussion today and looking forward to work with you in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for your excellent presentation and uh, touching some key points as uh, energy efficiency and uh, as uh, uh, green solutions. And also that you have mentioned uh, uh, that now we are also discussing about uh, different types of making uh, 5G infrastructure secure. We are discussing about open run and we are discussing about uh, 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 how to ensure uh, facilities, uh, networks much more secure. And also at the end, you have mentioned uh, the joint undertaking on 6G. So I think it's very important uh, to go forward with 5G, but on the other hand, understand what will be in the future and how important it is uh, to join those two perspectives. Now, I want to give the floor for intervention uh, Nails Kalnins, uh, responsible for business development from Electronic Communications Office of Latvia. Uh, uh, those electronic uh, offices in all member states are crucial and important for implementing 5G uh, 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 infrastructure uh, and uh, preparing the proper framework uh, and opening the national discussions or on, uh, on the roadmap uh, how to achieve 5G goals. Uh, so names, the floor is yours, please. Yeah, hello. I hope so that you hear me well. Uh, I would like to send a warm greetings from rainy Vega. It's still something between <laughs> autumn and winter here. Uh, but nevertheless, we can uh, discuss 5G topics because it doesn't matter what kind of uh, weather we have outside. So, uh, yeah, I'm representing a local uh, technical regulator, uh, technical communication office. In the meantime, 
uh, one of our biggest initiatives in relation to 5G is a 5G territory. Uh, some of you have participated already in our forum uh, during last three years and actually uh, already starting working on 5G matters, uh, let's say four years ago. Basically, we recognized that, first of all, we are not talking so much about commun communication between people, right? We are talking about machine communication. We are talking about machine communication with artificial intelligence. And this is actually the very great sense why we should have 5G. Uh, what, uh, if you're looking from Latvia's perspective, from technical regulator, actually we did uh, all whole works, uh, the frequencies are planned uh, and auctions are realized and uh, all operators actually can start to develop the networks. And they actually, they do this already all three operators have established their first networks uh, here in Riga and around the country. Uh, at the beginning, and in this moment, they are in very, very early stage. Uh, they are small ones, basically uh, just to test things. I mean, for op to test the operator's capabilities. And in the meantime, also to provide uh, technical opportunities for companies who would like to test 5G networks as a users. And of course, also here we're looking with a great perspective on our universities and startups. And we hope uh, that they will come up with a greater solutions actually how to use the 5G. Because uh, just in the morning, I had a great discussion with one of our operators and, 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 and he confirms once again, the simple sentence, uh, we are ready to implement networks basically in next three months. There are all, let's say, technical equipment there, the technical capacities are there, also investment uh, is there. The question is what to do with the network because uh, still companies, even SMEs have very, very little uh, knowledge and understanding how they can use 5G network for their business uh, future, for their business growth. And this is actually the reason why we having all those discussions uh, and pilot projects and test beds in frame of 5G territory, actually to bring people together, the SMEs, the larger enterprises, the network operators, the government people, uh, because if we talk also about new solutions of 5G, as we know, there still is a quite, uh, let's say, massive work to be done in relation to new legislations. Because as we know, in laboratories, drone clouds can fly around, but they can fly only in this restricted areas. We know that uh, uh, car platooning is nothing let's say very special, right? But uh, there is a lack of legal uh, frameworks to allow those technologies to be on the streets and the roads. So I would like to say that if we talk about 5G development in Europe, then first of all, we should concentrate on those issues and we should solve them actually to allow for small and medium enterprises and not, and not just for them, uh, to use the network practically. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Neris, because I think it's crucial. Uh, we should not only discuss, I fully agree, uh, uh, about the, the technical aspects and uh, all security issues. It's fundamental, of course, and we need to use uh, investment money from the uh, future European funds. But on the other hand, uh, we need to put the question out how to use 5G, because uh, if we will be ready faster with the readiness uh, done by companies, done by users, done by small, medium enterprises, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the start, the real start of 5G uh, will be much more faster. And on the other hand, effective, yes, because uh, 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 if the possibility, if possibilities for creating the building, the infrastructure 
uh, exists. So uh, on the other side, we need to start with services, with uh, business activities, uh, 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 new possibilities, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, and I will uh, uh, keep uh, fingers for Latvian solutions uh, and the good effects of your options. Uh, and now I want to ask uh, Lise Fuhr, uh, uh, the Director General, European Telecommunications Network Operators, uh, ETNO. Uh, uh, Lise is very involved in, from the very beginning, from many activities for 5G. Uh, we have discussed many times that, okay, we need much more pro-investment climate uh, 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 for implementation of 5G. What is your view now? And uh, the floor is yours, please, Lise. Well, thank you, uh, Michal. Uh, that was a, a very nice introduction. And also thank you to MEP uh, Ivan Stefanic for inviting Etno. Uh, for us, of course, 5G is, is extremely important. But also, uh, it's important that we support the SMEs uh, because we see, see these as the most important economic factor uh, of Europe. It's also a pleasure to see some of my colleagues here from Deutsche Telekom and Huawei who are also speaking here uh, with the spotlight of, of the most important uh, economic actor, the SMEs. Uh, for us, because we see SMEs as the foundation of uh, Europe, we must, must make sure that actually they had the opportunity to grow, that's one thing. But another thing is we, we need to make sure that they are resilient and strong in, in case of a crisis as the one we have right now. So the last year we have all spoken about how the crisis actually showed us how it's important to have a digital uh, uh, and be digitally prepared as a company whether you're small or big and, and even uh, governments and countries needed to be very digital. We had a, a, a digital crash course and, and we needed really to, to adapt and, and become uh, and work uh, virtually. So, but I, I would actually like to start with a few numbers because I think that's extremely interesting when, when we talk about SMEs uh, because if we look at the beginning of this year, how prepared were the SMEs uh, uh, on, on in the EU to actually be digital? We looked at the DC uh, uh, index for 2020, and that's a very important uh, uh, indicator of how we are doing uh, digitally in, in Europe, uh, because that's actually the digital performance of all the EU member states. And these numbers were taken before we actually had this extremely challenging years. Uh, the year this is from 2019. And if we look at those numbers, uh, um, how many SMEs were, were selling online at the beginning of, of this year? We found out it's one of five, that's 18%. And how many SMEs were on the cloud uh, at the beginning of the year? Again, we have uh, one out of five. We had, uh, I think uh, it was uh, some, some of the prior speakers spoke about big data. And if you look at those numbers, it's one out of eight uh, uh, SMEs that has a focus on, on a data in their business uh, and has it integrated. And I think these, uh, uh, these numbers need to improve. And I think we all have a responsibility in helping the improvement of this, both for the growth, but also, as I say, the resilience and, and able to manage during a, a pandemic as, as we, we saw. So uh, let me have uh, three, uh, um, three points here that I find is important. First and foremost, uh, we need uh, the SMEs to adapt the digital technologies. It must be put as one of their uh, core operations uh, point. Um, part of this is uh, we have the, we heard also we have the green and digital uh, uh, areas. They are actually very uh, interdependent. And we strongly believe uh, for us right now, 
that we cannot have a green transition without digitalization, but we can also not have a digitalization happening without uh, being green. So these needs to be going hand in hand. And here, the SMEs can, can be of great help, uh, both for the telcos, but also uh, uh, for the rest of, of Europe. So we see the 5G adaption is still having uh, uh, several roadblocks, but of course we have some EU countries that are uh, now uh, first movers and, and have opened up for this technology. But again, uh, back to your point, uh, uh, Mikhail, it's, it's about investment. It's about uh, creating the correct uh, regulatory uh, framework for uh, the rollout of, of 5G. And here, cost is a huge factor. So uh, we're happy to see that the commission is looking at the broadband cost reduction directive because cost is, is ultimate here. Uh, and also the price of uh, prices on spectrum is, is uh, uh, important. But again, uh, uh, let's go back to the SMEs. Uh, I shouldn't only talk about uh, investment because for us, the SMEs as a strong economic factor of Europe is extremely important. Uh, and it's important we all can uh, empower SMEs to become greener and to become more digital through the intelligent networks that the 5G uh, um, actually are offering. So that's one thing we, we think it's, it's important, but we talked all about the, the concerns that are out there. Uh, and and uh, in Etna, we have done a study on uh, the perception of 5G in Europe. Uh, and that's uh, showed us some interesting numbers. Uh, one of those numbers were, uh, it's an Ipsos studies that we did uh, uh, together with Etna and 85% uh, of those who were interviewed think that 5G is important for a business. So that's a big number, 85%. What is more, uh, uh, um, among those who were interviewed, uh, who actually have a managerial re uh, responsibility, they 51% of those are intending to uh, implement 5G in their company. So that's also important numbers when we talk about how is 5G perceived uh, in Europe? And this was a questionnaire uh, done uh, amongst 25 of the member states in, in EU. So that was my first, it's the uh, adoption. The second one is the cloud is important. So uh, the importance of cloud services cannot be uh, stressed enough. Of course, we saw shops and, and businesses that were closed for a long period in, in 2020. And the uh, economic consequences, we don't know yet. Unfortunately, we really hope uh, uh, that many of the SMEs learned and actually are adapting to the cloud. But at the beginning of the year, it was only one out of five who were on the cloud. And, and that's a number we also need to, to improve because we think that cloud can actually allow many more to carry on their, their activities remotely and avoid severe and long-term consequences here. So uh, what we think is that it's the pandemic showed us that being digital is no longer an option. It's an imperative to actually uh, strive and grow as an SME. My last point that I, I really like to, to highlight that's on security uh, because security is one of those areas that lies uh, close to Telco's heart. We have dealt with securities for more than a century. And I think uh, security of course is extremely uh, important. And I, I would like to quote Peter Stuckman on this one. He's saying 5G is even more secure than 4G. So we're actually getting more security. And we see that it actually are offering more security in, in uh, end to end. We have stronger authentication, we have network slicing, and we have artificial intelligence. And uh, so for us, it's, a, it's an important message to actually say that uh, uh, we need to, to actually communicate that 5G is secure and uh, we need to build trust and acceptance around 5G 
because without the trust and acceptance of 5G, we will not have the uptake that we need of, of the 5G technology. So here, I think it's important that we as Edno, all the politicians, but also uh, the SME uh, Association help us communicate this message to all of, of the European businesses. So my, my last conclusion is we, we have a fresh new year ahead of us uh, and uh, we have the milestone agreement on the recovery package that puts digital and green transition at the center. And uh, uh, if we listen also to uh, a colleague of, of Peter uh, Felicia Stan Staneshu of uh, head of unit uh, recovery uh, B2, uh, she's saying most of the financial stimulus must have two aspects in mind. It's a reform and it's a collaboration. And these needs to be addressed uh, immediately. So we agree on this. We are there to help reform and collaborate. And I think with this in, in mind, uh, we have no time to, to lose. Uh, we actually need to work together to uh, strengthen our economy uh, um, engines, which are the SMEs here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Lisa. I think it was very, very important what you have said. And, uh, and uh, uh, I fully agree that we, uh, uh, we shouldn't waste time. And there are many challenges. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I want to express it uh, that uh, at the same time when we are discussing about SMEs and 5G, how to use 5G, we need to start stronger work in the European Union on digitization of SMEs, because this is a real problem. Uh, you have um, presented the, the results of some analysis, uh, and we need to make it if we want to make 5G implementation much more fruitful and effective also for business development. And the second point you have touched also is to make and to implement some solutions related to 5G, uh, as for example, uh, spectrum allocation and some decisions at the same time in all European member states. Why it is important? Because this is a new possibility for SMEs also to scale up their activities. And if we will have 5G in one country and uh, uh, 5G in the next country, close to, 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 to this country, in the perspective of two years, so it will be a killer for the business development, for the economic development, and for the society. So we need to, to, to coordinate and uh, uh, our actions, I, I, fully, uh, I fully agree. And now we are going, thank you very much, Lise, we are moving to Sven Lachmund, uh, Chairman of Security Assurance Group uh, from GSMA, uh, also senior expert uh, network security and uh, in cooperation with Deutsche uh, Telekom Security. Uh, Sven, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here today and for your nice words introducing me. I have brought two aspects which I'd like to share with you today. The first one is on what SMEs should do. And the second one is what SMEs would need as an environment to exist and grow properly. Let me start with the first one, which is what SMEs should do. And we learned already by, from the previous speakers that it is necessary that SMEs become more digital, that they consider digitization and connectedness for their business. I share this view, but in the same go, it's important that SMEs understand how technology works and what the implications are if they decide to go for using certain types of technology. This um, touches anything. It uh, touches AI, it touches cloud, obviously 5G, and many more aspects. And typically what I have seen in my personal experience as a um, security focus specialist is that people do often enough not pay enough attention on what 
the implications are and what the risk of their decisions they make is. And to be able to make an informed decision, people need to understand the technology behind. It doesn't mean that everybody needs to be a tech specialist. Certainly not. That won't happen. Um, but people should have an idea, a rough idea on what things are doing and what it means for their business and for their assets. I give you two examples. The first example is on um, impact on business. For instance, if you have an SME and you have some assets, corporate assets, and you decide to use a cloud service or whatever um, service offered somewhere on the internet, your data will be processed there. That means there is a third party, the um, owner of the service, who would have to some extent access to your assets. And you need to understand if your assets are safely stored there and safely processed there. And only if you know that this is the case, you should go ahead. Otherwise, you might run the risk losing these assets and you might um, end up in competitive disadvantage. Second example is on product design. For instance, take the example of a autonomous vehicle. I hear every now and then that people believe for an autonomous vehicle you need 5G because of the low latency and the bandwidth that is provided. Um, for me, it is key to emphasize here that an autonomous vehicle, as the name says, needs to drive autonomously. That means without any connectivity, this vehicle needs to make its own decisions. It needs to scan the environment, understand what's going on, and adjust speed, directions, and anything like. You can't rely on the 5G network to be there for safely drive a car. That would be bad product design because nobody can guarantee to you that the network will always be there, even if it's just a very small spot on Earth where there is no connection. Your car might fail if you rely on connectivity. So this is important to understand. You need to understand what does the technology mean for you, for your business, for your product design when you decide using it. And that is true for all SMEs, actually, not only those offering services or products in the IT or uh, ICT world, but also those who produce some other stuff, because nobody can do nowadays without IT. IT is everywhere. It's all connected. And you will use services and uh, platforms of third parties, and you need to understand them. That's key. Awareness is key. That was my aspect on what um, SMEs need to do. Now let's move on to what SMEs need for um, having a good environment in the EU. And I believe there is two things. The first one is um, they need to get proper support on being able to assess the reliability and security of ICT. And that could cover anything you want, services, products, anything you like, because if you are a customer of a service or a product, you can't really judge from the outside. Is this service or product secure enough? Did the manufacturer pay, manufacturer pay enough attention on doing things right? Is there an appropriate upgrade path for the product or service in the future? And so on. This is difficult or even impossible to judge from the outside. So you need somebody doing that. And um, there is a chance to get this in, introduced in the EU with the Cybersecurity Act and the certification framework, which has been developed. And within the certification framework for different industries, different um, certification schemes will be introduced in the EU in the coming years with the goal of introducing some security assurance in the different industries to provide a certificate that provides you some information that makes it much, much more transparent to you compared to today, what security guarantees you get from a product or 
a service. And um, the 5G network is one of these services. If you are an SME and you want to rely on the 5G network, obviously you want to know what it is about. And again, for us as a mobile network operator, we depend on the equipment which we put on our network and um, we need some guarantees to be able to run them safely and securely. And all this can be improved and can become much more transparent if we introduce some baseline security controls which are demanded by any manufacturers of products, by any providers of services, so that they show and demonstrate how they tackle security. And tackling security is key for everybody, for all of us, um, for all industries. Nobody can, can be excluded here because everything is connected nowadays and we'll even in, uh, continue to do this journey of connecting more things than are connected now. And we need to make sure that all these things, individual components and then the combination of components to bigger things like systems or services is secure. So helping um, SMEs and enterprises in general with introducing security assurance, having baseline security controls available, and then enforcing these in the context of certification schemes is an important way in the right direction. And from the GSM Association, who we are the trade organization of the mobile industry, we are working for more than six years now on such a certification scheme for the mobile industry. And we intend to introduce this globally to ensure that there is this uh, baseline of security, which I was talking about, but in a way that the security assurance levels demanded are pretty much the same across the world because um, IT or ICT doesn't happen in one country or in one region only. It happens everywhere and we all use products and services produced elsewhere. And it is key for making baseline security possible and for keeping cost under control that there is no fragmentation of um, security assurance. And this is why we started working on our um, mobile oriented uh, security assurance scheme, which we want to deploy globally to make sure that um, in as many countries as possible, the same baseline security requirements will be demanded from regulators because only then the vendors and manufacturers can focus on real security and high quality good products rather than on making sure that they meet different sets of requirements coming from different regions or countries. My second point in what SMEs need is personnel that is well educated in terms of ICT and ICT security in general. I have seen unfortunately in many, many companies, regardless which size, focus is mainly on features, feature richness, but security often enough is only an afterthought. And it doesn't work like that in our highly connected information society. Security must become a integral part of products and services. It must be thought of from day one, like the features and the overall design. And this only works if there is the right mindset and if people are broadly educated along these lines. And with these statements I made, I think I showed you that it is uh, covering way more than just 5G. 5G, I think, is an enabler. It will provide, as uh, other speakers said before me, new features which will help SMEs and other enterprises <clears throat> to grow their business. But there is more to it. There is cloud, there is AI, there is connectivity in general. We can also include 4G and the fixed line network. We all, for all these technologies, we need the right approach. And that's it.
for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sam, for very inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, uh, you have uh, mentioned and raised very strongly uh, the topic of awareness and uh, the right mindset. I think it is crucial when we are discussing uh, about uh, small medium enterprises, uh, digital also also digital development, because it's starting from uh, uh, the awareness how important all kinds of new technologies could be, and of course it's related to the problem of uh, staff of. Uh, personnel, and also it's related to the problem of uh, feeling that uh, uh, the security is guaranteed by uh, special solutions, by assurance, by certification schemes, as you have mentioned. And I think that this is crucial because after uh, uh, the approval and the political approval and uh, starting implementation of Cybersecurity Act, there is the big work in the European Union on certifications. And uh, very often when we are discussing about some threats for 5G, uh, there are some questions addressed to uh, Huawei. Uh, we have today Abraham Liu, chief representative to institutions. Uh, and uh, I think that it is also important to understand that when we are talking about security, we need at the same time to discuss about certification schemes and make those certification schemes globally functioning as, uh, as when uh, uh, mentioned, because uh, this is not only the, the area of European Union, we need to have uh, and to develop security globally. Uh, what is your opinion, uh, um, uh, Mr. Abraham, uh, uh, about uh, the discussion about cybersecurity in the European Union, what can be your contribution uh, looking at, uh, on, uh, at all uh, misunderstandings, but on the other, the, the real threats uh, presented by many partners. Uh, what is your view on the 5G development in the European Union and uh, which are the key uh, challenges 5G can solve for SMEs. So 5G as a uh, solve maker for uh, many SMEs uh, and future oriented. Please, Abraham, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mikan Boli. Thank you very much for having me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts. If in the past of your month, I mean, year 2020, this year, a special year, what have been told taught us you know anything it's actually the importance of the the digital economy the digital technology i mean the the, the connectivity which the operator our customer has been busy on build the the infrastructure in the past 10 years have worked support the current you know uh, crisis pandemic you know challenges where us we can have this kind of video conference, teleworking, e-learning. I think I'm very proud that Huawei is part of this, you know, ICT industry, you know, contributed to this, uh, uh, you know, digital infrastructure here in Europe and also in the rest of the world. And then the, the digital, I mean, uh, you know, technology have kept many business ongoing and many people to work. And then the digital economy that will be the central to Europeans upcoming post-pandemic economic recovery. And we know that SME have long been at the heart of the European economy, as same as the other part of the world. Many places like in China or America, I think the SMEs, they all play key roles, representing a very big portion of the, 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 the economy in terms of the GDP, and also in terms of the job creation. I think they have been proven crucial you know, I mean, create the majority, most of the, the, the jobs. And then they are most able to adapt quickly to the new opportunities and modify their business models to take advantages of the new digital era. If we recall back to, let's see, year 2003, 
year 2004, where the SARS, you know, happened in China, and then the, that crisis actually, you know, transformed dramatically those small and you know, small business in China, who later becomes the the, the 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 big players in the internet economy. That is, you know, actually a similar situation, but the, the the those small business adopted by then the digital technology, you know, later becomes the the the, the big players in the e-commerce in terms of the you know internet e economy. I think they are a, a, a good uh, I mean not only in China but also in US and somewhere in Europe, there are stories like this happening in in, in the past, you know, many many years. And we talk about, uh, you know, five uh, G. I mean, the pandemic has turbocharged the adop uh, the adoption of the digital technologies and then transformation of the economy. But SMEs have also been hardest. Uh, I mean, uh, by the COVID, I mean. Uh, by the COVID crisis, so enable them to regrow and take these opportunities, and we need even an even faster, more reliable, and increasingly secure network, and that means you know uh, the 5G, and the 5G can be a game changer, uh, accelerating the re recovery and boost economic growth. A 5G network will allow SMEs to be better connected. To the wider communities too. To the wider, I mean, the, the European and the global economy, not just the, the urban area, but also in the in the rural community communities. You know, if they modify their business model and get the faster or quicker access, uh, I mean, to to the to through the internet, through the through the mobile internet, a fast deployment uh, connectivity. You know, so that will enable them. You know, with the very, I mean, affordable costs, you know, to enable them to do business with, the, you know, outside world. You know, that that is um, simply, you know, the 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 possibility where the 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 technology like five G, you know, can bring. Moreover, it can, you know, together with the technology like AI or uh, robotics or you know, then a lot of potential. We don't know yet. You know, it's far too far early to summarize. All this uh, possibility, but I think uh, you know the the five G as an enabling technology. I mean, its its features of uh, you know uh, ultra uh, broadband. I mean, uh, the the lower latency and the massive connections itself. Those those features will will give uh, a lot of possibilities here. But um, you know, I I must agree. I mean, uh, what the the previous speakers has mentioned. You know the, the reliability or security of the 5G itself. It's it's very important. That is kind of precondition for the digital economy. The same for the SMEs. You know to have the full confidence of the network or the data. You know of you know, they are relying on and then the data they are going to store. You know uh, you know on this future uh, cloud. But um, of course, although most of the network can never be. You know, 100% secured, and then there is a, a a kind of cost and balance to 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 to, to I mean, there is a, a proper balance to 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 achieve, and it is, but it is possible to put measures in place to make 5G as secure as we can, and for instance, the 5G connectivity allows for more processes called uh, network smithing, uh, I mean, uh, which enables operators to to fence off part of the network for a dedicated application uh, or user. This guarantees greater speed and capacity and prevents other people from accessing the same bandwidth. Additionally, 5G network data is you know, more secured as uh, uh, Mr. Peter Stockman has mentioned, you know, than all the other technologies in history. So, but the 5G cybersecurity certification is, of course, a, a, a very good way to establish a unified cybersecurity assessment standard, provide the guideline, the guidance to all players, and build the consensus on security, so that this kind of discussion will not be too much politicized or being fragmented. 
We therefore recommend to continue to work on the 5G security and the, and the certification start, uh, started with the GSMA and 3GPP to develop a common approach that recognized throughout Europe and later benefit to all the world. I mean, the whole industry, we, we deserve to have, you know, this kind of common factual based, you know, standard certification to, to provide those necessary certainty so that the potential of the 5G or the role out of 5G implementation of the 5G in the member states can be ensured. And we at Huawei, we have been working closely with the operator and the, 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 the European government authorities, uh, and we are leading in the in the cybersecurity, and we contributed a major, you know a good portion of the cybersecurity standards, and we have have achieved a clean uh, track record. I mean, in the past 30 years, we have not uh, met any single major data breach, and we will continue to collaborate with the government's customers and partners to increase the drive towards a trustworthy foundation that which to build the security of the EU uh, 5G networks. But of course, investment is needed, both in security and also in the rollout of the network themselves, if SMEs are truly to benefit. A recent study showed that for every one euro spent directly on 5G capacity, over double that is generated in multiplayer uh, effects for consumers and the business. But money also needs to be spent on training and upscaling. If people are going to maximize the potential of the new digital economy, according to the European Commission's uh, Digital Economy and Society Index, 42% of the Europeans uh, lack basic digital skills. However, 82% of all today's jobs are requiring the digital competency. I must emphasize in that the upscaling you know, challenge itself also, you know, can take the 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 the, the, the five G as an opportunity, because with the more accessible data uh, broadband access, you know, the the, the 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 upscaling or training can be, you know, reached to to more and more uh, Europeans, which are currently are not connected. I mean, Huawei is committed to to exploring always to improve everyone's digital skills. Under the umbrella of our Take for All initiative, we are already partnering with many institutions across Europe to bring people into a new digital era. We never stop thinking about the future and that also means future skills and training. We will continue to deliver more opportunities and projects to improve people's access and connect connectivity and tech industries by, in, by, invest, by investing in education and training and that, so that no one is left behind. So come back to today's topic, you know, 5G and SMEs. I think in my mind, you know, Europeans SMEs means a lot of shadow champions. You know, they, you are very strong in the many vertical traditional industry. I mean, looking into the future, 5G is bringing uh, uh, you know, this enabling technology is bringing tremendous opportunity for them. You know, if they embrace a merit with the, the right digital technology and the right momentum, then they were going to be even more competitive, you know, in the future, I mean, in, in, in the world, and the still or uh, be the, 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 the champion in those industry and to be more competitive, to be honest to you, in a, in a, in a, in a future, in a global competition. Thank you, Abraham, <clears throat> for your uh, explanation of many aspects of function of five and the relation between five G F and the, the, the economic digital development and also uh, uh, SME development. Uh, and I I fully agree that uh, when we are discussing uh, about those issues, also about security. Uh, we need to focus on the side of the discussion because uh, the redundancy of some political uh, tensions uh, uh, are not so useful in many practical solutions, but they exist and we need to remember that they are exist, that they are, that they uh, exist. 
uh, but uh, uh, thinking about marriage side, and you have uh, raised the problem, the question of uh, certifications and the common uh, standards for uh, functioning globally. Uh, uh, so I think that uh, when you are looking uh, at uh, European uh, toolbox uh, related to 5G, uh, 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 so this is your way to find the proper assessment uh, to fulfill all requirements described in this uh, in this toolbox. This is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the suggestion is, yes, and uh, and you and I, I, th I see that you are, you uh, uh, your company are working on on, on those issues. And uh, thank you very much for your contribution to this discussion uh, and very strong uh, uh, message. And now uh, uh, we are moving to Paul Rubik, uh, uh, the president of SME Connect, uh, the board member of EIT, uh, uh, involved in many uh, political and uh, business activities. When I'm saying political, it means uh, uh, politics and policies addressed to small medium enterprises development. Uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, I'm also looking at the at the uh, 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 Q and A uh, 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 table, and there is no any information that somebody put the question. So we have uh, uh, 16 minutes. So the part of this is, uh, of course, addressed to Paul. Paul, the floor is yours. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mikey, and I'm happy. Uh that we are together with Ivan uh, to see that our community also with uh, Pilla uh, is still working and uh, that we are a good team. Uh, you know, I have now changed from European Parliament uh, to the European Social and Economic Committee, uh, which is uh, quite important to support uh, SMEs uh, from employers and, uh, and, and the side of uh, recovery. Uh, because if we don't get a social uh, uh, solution uh, for the recovery, uh, it uh, will be not uh, very easy. On the other hand, I am in the executive function uh, of uh, uh, the European Institute of Technology, uh, where I am also uh, supporting uh, the EIT digital uh, and digital al alumni where it's a wonderful network uh, through all different communities, uh, especially also in the SME area, startups, uh, where we try to support uh, uh, the new way of uh, uh, communication and the change from the real world into the virtual world, as I always say, uh, and that's uh, quite uh, substantial. Uh, we all know that uh, with a Connecting Europe facility, uh, we could do much more. Uh, as I remember, uh, starting with the roaming case, uh, and Pilla still uh, knows, I think, quite good, and also Michael, uh, that we started uh, the digital single market, and, and at least we are not really on, on, on the final uh, stage, because the truth is, um, I want to buy a SIM card to say so in any of the European member states, to have competition not only within member states, but also between member states. And if you look uh, carefully to the future, uh, of course, it's clear uh, that we also have to look to the international uh, structures, uh, to the International Telecommunication Union, uh, which standards we get uh, as a compulsory, what's possible uh, in Geneva to achieve with uh, uh, the standardization. And I think it's, it's, it's clear that it must be world standards uh, and uh, to produce standards, it's not only a, a question of Etsy and, and our European standard organization. I think it's, it's quite important to see how can we deliver international standards because uh, the competition is global and the value chains are global. And uh, I think nationalism from whom, whoever it, it's uh, uh, produced uh, is not the solution for the wealth and, and for a good development, uh, because the nationalism and the egoism is always going into poverty. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why we don't like monopoles. We like uh, to have good competition. 
and so therefore private uh, public partnership especially in rollout of 5g and uh, fiber uh, will play a, a key role uh, we need masts uh, and all masts in europe should be connected uh, with fiber uh, all masts should have uh, uh, renewable energy independently uh, to be driven in any kind of uh, situation it's a question of of security uh, that we have different systems uh, I'm, I'm also very happy that uh, uh, fiber is is, is uh, deploying uh, quite well but it could uh, take more speed uh, especially for smes i think it's necessary uh, to be on the top of of the development and also uh, the technological neutrality uh, in this area will play a key role in, 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 in the function of, uh, of the uh, interoperability of, of different systems and uh, also the physical uh, uh, change in, 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 in having different uh, physical systems which are independent from each other uh, because like COVID crisis, a virus with, which goes around the world uh, we also will have virus in, in the internet and in our systems uh, and we should be prepared uh, much better than with the virus in the medical area. I think we should be much better prepared in, in our new system because now we changed uh, a lot into our systems and if they are not working it would be a disaster uh, for all of us. So it's clear that uh, the digital single market uh, will play a, a further uh, important role. That's the reason why we, not, uh, we would need more uh, questions on notification. Who are the bodies who are ready uh, to do the certification? Uh, I think that's uh, a, a question of public authority. Uh, we have uh, the European Commission, which should come up uh, with the question of notification uh, together with the uh, uh, standard uh, bodies. Uh, to see how we can achieve uh, also a situation with the International Telecom Telecommunication Union, uh, which standards are uh, necessary uh, to get the right uh, certifications. Uh, we need uh, new audit systems. I think we need uh, for the framework and for the infrastructure, uh, new audit systems, uh, which uh, we could trust. Uh, and uh, it's also clear uh, that uh, within the uh, public procurement system, uh, we all know the beauty contest, uh, we know whatever uh, the reason could be uh, to have the most efficient uh, system uh, in place. Uh, we had all the auction systems. Uh, yes, I think it's, it's necessary that every region, every city uh, gets its own task. Uh, and therefore, SMEs are, I think, a key part in the whole value chain, first of all, as a supplier, but what's much more important uh, as a consumer, uh, because 50% of the GDP is produced from SMEs and 80% of the taxation comes from SME and two thirds of the jobs in Europe are done by SMEs. So we shouldn't under-evaluate uh, uh, the situation of, of SMEs and that what I learned in the European Institute of Technology uh, that we have to be more active in, 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 in being engaged in, in entrepreneurial education uh, because only if we have good entrepreneurial education and education and vocational training, especially now uh, in this area uh, would play a key role uh, without vocational training, we get lost. And uh, that's the reason why SMEs need this push. Uh, and it's a, a key question, how can we adapt our systems uh, in the taxation, how, which incentives we can give uh, that we have the, the right rollout in, in this area. And of course, cost reduction uh, will play a key role because it's, uh, it's clear that we need uh, one system which is uh, uh, defining the architecture of a system uh, on the local level. You know, it must be a tailor-made uh, because on every level you need uh, different structures, local structures, re regional structures, national structures, European and global structures. 
So we should work on all this uh, level, uh, which structures uh, could be uh, the best and how the framework uh, could perform uh, on, on, on the right uh, uh, area. And uh, at least uh, we see that uh, the debate on spectrum uh, is, is now moving in, into, the, into the right uh, direction. And if I remember what Sven has uh, said, uh, the example, uh, do we need uh, 5G for uh, independent cars? Uh, of course we need uh, 5G for independent cars. Yes, the car has to drive totally independent, but if we want to have efficient system, uh, as I always say, for only green light uh, in the cities, uh, where your uh, uh, a break or a stop is, is, is forbidden because we need a, a fluent uh, driving through the cities because it's so important for the environment. Uh, uh, and we know that in, in China, Wuxi has a, a very good example how to make it attractive The 5G uh, can be the base of, of, of more efficiency and uh, environmental uh, activity. Uh, uh, especially the fine particles in the air by, by using your brakes uh, in front of a red light. Uh, the rubber, millions of tons of rubbers are, are going through our cities and from the braking system uh, and the combustion engine are uh, very bad in, in energy efficiency. And also e-mobility will suffer if we have no continuous speed. So 5 5G would be a wonderful supporter for more efficiency. And that's what we need. We need, especially for the uh, SMEs, more efficiency. Efficiency is a game changer. And uh, therefore, I'm very happy that the architecture of a system, the building of a system, and the maintenance of a system uh, should be uh, also take care on SMEs and uh, uh, involve them in the overall situation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh... Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, uh, and I think it's important that you put some principles as interoperability, technology neutrality, uh, international standards, clear competition rules, notifications, public procurements uh, 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 that are crucial for the 5G development. And also you have mentioned national issues, which are important. Thank you very much, Paul. Now. I want to move to Pilar de Castillo uh, be, after a very fruitful, I think, uh, uh, touching many dimensions of the problem of 5G uh, implementation and also uh, uh, showing the clear importance of 5G for SME uh, uh, development. Uh, uh, so after that, uh, I think the conclusions are yours, Pilar, please. Thank you very much, uh, Michal. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank SME Europe uh, of uh, the EPP for inviting me uh, for this uh, timely debate. And uh, together with this, I must say, for sharing uh, this time with uh, such uh, good friends, which uh, I have not uh, quite recently the possibility to to be with, uh, which is in this case, mostly Paul Lubick and Mihail Voli. So that's a real pleasure, uh, you know, so, so, so much memories, you know, from the past, that is a real pleasure. Ivan, thank you very much as well. Lisa, well, you all, I mean, ladies, you are all uh, people, uh, people close to me, so of you very much, some of them, uh, which from time to time, at least, I have the possibility to meet. But uh, let's start. I'm going to be brief because so many things have been said. So it's difficult to have a summary. I'm not trying to, to develop, to have to make a summary. Just to add some reflections, which in many aspects will be more of the same. But I will to include, I would like to include some uh, nuances, maybe that uh, still uh, are in the air and has not been uh, expressed. Well, there is a mantra. Now, the mantra it is that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has become an accelerator uh, of uh, Europe needs uh, to move up a gear in this digital transformation. Everyone, you know, through the globe, uh, the whole, we agree, for, for sure in the European Union. Now, we have made possible to go from the mantra to 
an active conclusion of uh, the pandemic. So that is our duty. We must try to, to really uh, go, I mean, forward uh, and uh, try to go to the, the concrete measures, the, the, the uh, policies that really can make this uh, happen. Uh, well, uh, from this perspective, 5G is crucial. I mean, this is so very clear. Opens uh, new ways of working in all sector of the economies, I must say. I mean, it's difficult to find a sector that you can say, okay, but digitization is so, not so much important. None of them. I, I think uh, some kind of uh, reward must be uh, a gift to the one that uh, localized the sector, which uh, is not impacted by, by that and dramatically impacted. Uh, so it is because uh, this uh, uh, development of the, of the 5G open new ways, allowing for both increased productivity and completely new user experiences, which is so much important. By limiting the opportunity to increase speed, reliability, capacity, and reduce latency, we will deny the possibility to reap the full benefits uh, of all the new applications, products, services, and business models that 5G uh, will enable. That's very clear. Uh, indeed, in my view, there is no doubt that uh, smaller uh, businesses and startups will be significant beneficiaries of wider availability of high quality, uh, quality connectivity. 5G will provide them with a tool to better compete with larger corporations with normally have top connectivity installed in their premises. Likewise, by accelerating 5G coverage across Europe, we are facilitating innovation and entrepreneurship uh, a key characteristics of the uh, of startups and smaller companies, but uh, this uh, new possibility for better for for stronger competitions uh, with uh, 5G available for for all, I think is is uh, something to to really be considered into this analysis of how much important is for uh, 5G. Uh, so, what uh, does Europe? Uh, uh, need to, 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 to foster uh, its deployment, the deployment of 5G in the, let's say, short uh, mid range, uh, range, not in the long, long one, which we'll see what happened then. But then uh, we have to think in the, in the, coming, in the coming needs and then the coming solution and the true solution now. And I will mention three of them. One is ensure uh, that the electronic communication code is implemented correctly. It still is uh, something that is, has not been um, implemented in, in, in different countries, uh, countries and, and this uh, really is a piece that is needed uh, for this development. Secondly, eliminating persisting obstacles for 5G networks. More specifically, we must increase cooperation across sectors and exploit synergies. For example, with energy, water, transports, by creating then the condition for more efficient deployment of new physical infrastructure so that the networks can be rolled out at lower cost. Taking into account that on the one hand, civil engineers represent up to 80% uh, of the cost of deploying broadband networks, it is crucial to review as soon as possible the broadband, the broadband cost reduction directive. So this is something that can, um, can, uh, can help that uh, 5E development um, uh, go, go forward uh, with um, at better speed, you know, faster speed. Um, so yeah, and in the third place, I want to mention, that has been mentioned, because it's one of the uh, topics uh, of, the, of the debate, security, you know, ensure the security of 5G networks. Well, uh, based on the toolbox and the recommendations on cybersecurity of 5G networks, we need to achieve a common approach based on the effective and efficient use of expertise from member states and industry. In, industry. Uh, in addition, the EU needs uh, to continue to drive the agenda by supporting cybersecurity across the entire value chain, from research to the development uh, deployment, 
uh, or an uptake of key technologies. I think this is also important to take it into account, to be taken into account. In this regard, such as um, proposals, such as the Digital Europe program, uh, will will earmark uh, up to 2 billion euros for financing a state of art cyber security equipment and infrastructure, infrastructure sorry, will undoubtedly play an important role as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, beyond fostering 5G deployment, focus uh, action on, on SME, a specific focused action on SME uh, players is required. More precisely, SME are an integral part of Europe industrial, industrial value chain that must be uh, digitalized. Uh, as we said that, I want to underline again this, and then consequently, authorities, public authorities, uh, must encourage the digitalization of SMEs by helping them with the adequate human and technical capabilities. And in this context, not only the recovery package will be a valuable, valuable tool, we must not forget that Horizon Europe and Digital Europe program will also be instrumental. And for that reason, they must be activated as soon as possible. In conclusion, um, 5G connectivity will impact absolutely the future of SME and macro businesses. And as a consequence, it will determine, so clear like that, will determine Europe's connectivity, competitiveness, competitiveness for the coming year. So there is really very much at stake. That's, uh, that's as it is. So, uh, well, thank you very much uh, again. It was uh, fantastic to see you all. And um, I hope you invite me again, not so late. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Pilar, for excellent uh, summary of our meeting and some clear recommendations. I think uh, it is important to understand and to have those recommendations. And I, I think that at the end you have uh, expressed very strongly how important it is to build the European competitive advantages. And uh, all those are also related it's clear to 5G and digital development. So thank you uh, again, and thank you to thank you all our partners and uh, participants uh, of uh, of this panel. And uh, now uh, we can finish and uh, stay, uh, stay healthy, and be safety, and be digital, uh, and have a nice evening. Uh, Whenever, wherever you are, yes, because probably we are in the different places, but we are connected. So thank you very much for the possibility to be connected. Mm -hmm.